Welcome to the Nonprofit Report, your update on nonprofit organizations, issues, and leaders viewable on YouTube and Oppenheim TV. I'm your host, Mark Oppenheim. Today, we're discussing the work of United Way organizations in the American Midwest with our special guests, Lisa Cordes, President and CEO of United Way of Central Ohio, Donna Forsberg, President and CEO of United Way of the Midlands, and Sean Garrett, President and CEO of the United Way of Metro Chicago. So, Thank you all for joining us. It is just so wonderful to have you. I am so happy to be talking about the United Ways in the Midwest. I'm going to go to you, Sean. The Midwest encompasses about 12 states and um, and some of the largest metro areas in this nation. It also has a ecosystem that is connected to the entire nation, but also is very complementary within that particular region. So let's talk a little bit about your various constituents, and let's let's start with you, Sean, since um, since uh, we lighted there in Metro Chicago. You have a uh, a city that is incredibly diverse. It has uh, a lot of different constituents. There mm-hmm. are uh, the stresses of any major uh, metro area. Talk a little bit about how those stresses affect how you've shaped United Way and and your board has shaped United Way over the years. Yeah, well, again, thanks for the opportunity to be here with y'all and thrilled to, to be here with Shana and Lisa. Um, you know, our, our region is is vast. Um, you know, the Metro Chicago um, United Way serves a region of approximately 10 million people. Um, we have all of Cook County, which is the second largest county in America, um, DuPage County, and then portions of a few other counties. So it's just a really large area. And in some ways, we, we have, it's almost like a microcosm for the country because we have incredible diversity within our city. We also are rural um, and urban and suburban um, when you go through the entirety of our region. And so um, we have a lot of different needs and challenges. Um, You know, if you look and zoom in on the city context, obviously we are often um, kind of a a poster child for certain news organizations that want to talk about what life is like in Chicago. And um, the reality is life in Chicago is wonderful, but there are real challenges, right? And so you know, one of the things that we try to do with our work um, to to be able to reflect the diversity that that we we experience is to be hyper local. Um, and so, the the nature of how we do our work in any way in Chicago um, is largely place based. Um, we work in eighteen different neighborhoods across the city and the suburbs, um, and really let the the work in that specific area um, be defined by that neighborhood and that community because. The diversity of our region means that you know you can go three miles in one direction and have dramatically different outcomes. And in fact, we usually start our conversations um, with a map that shows the economic mobility based on the census tract that you go home in after you're born. And we have some of the most divergent outcomes um, in the country uh, all across our region. And so we really focus our work hyper locally. Um, so that we can reflect what those needs and opportunities are and the unique assets are in each of those neighborhoods and then really build on them um, so that we can get the best outcomes that we can. You know, I like what you're what you're talking about in terms of how where you are born, the circumstances that you um, that you find yourself in really can can dictate um, uh, your opportunity going forward. And in many ways, Shauna, you're trying to create a, a ability for people to rise to their capability through your work. Talk a little bit about how you define your geography, United Way of the Midlands, and and your constituents. You know, we are based in Omaha, Nebraska, and so a lot of our work is in that urban setting in the Omaha Council Bus Metro. But we also have several programs that we run for the state of Nebraska and also our two-on-one call center serves all of Nebraska, all of Iowa, and portions of Illinois. And so, you know, it, we're, we're very humbled to get to work across those geographic regions and, you know, really trying to understand uh, the differences and what challenges people have in an urban setting versus a rural setting um, and leaning in to address that. Um, you know, I think the other thing that's that's really important to understand is United Way is one, you typically, and as is in our community, we're one of the largest not-for-profits. Um, in the community, and that comes with a lot of benefit, right? People know you and 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 want you to lean in and help and assist. But you know, there's also great responsibility with that, and making sure that we're deploying those fragile resources, whether it be people's treasure or their time, in the most impactful way possible. Um, so we, you know, we're humbled to get to do that work, and I'm always grateful to be able to learn from colleagues from across the network 
uh, that help us refine and do that work really well. What I find to be really interesting, Lisa, is that is that you have two organizations in very different cities with very different characters, but you both have boards, right, Sean? Right, Shauna? Right? You both have boards, just like Lisa has a board. People are talking about the needs of their citizens, mm-hmm. right? They're thinking. They're thinking about education. They're thinking about kids. They're thinking about the elderly. They're thinking about uh, people in particular neighborhoods that might have specific needs. Lisa, talk a little bit about your situation over at United Way of Central Ohio. We are serving a community of 1.4 million and in a, in a state of 12 million people. So different and similar to Sean and Shauna. I, what One of the things that makes Ohio interesting is that we have 88 counties in Ohio and we we over the years of developing our state are very county based and so every you know every county has its own systems and so given that almost every county has had a united way we we now have 58 in our state but that's really different fabric when you compare um, ohio to other states so we have the second uh, largest number of united ways in ohio second to texas they have the most united ways but interesting that only four of the United Ways in Ohio are large, meaning raising over $20 million a year. Most are small and serving small communities, um, which is, you know, really great for these small communities that don't have a lot of funders or conveners to bring people together in the private sector. And in Columbus, um, there are many, many nonprofits, but we continue to be one of the uh, organizations that uh, can bring people together in really unique ways. And um, we are the only c- city in Ohio that's growing. So we're seeing rapid growth, which makes gives unique challenges to this United Way. What I think is so interesting is that we're talking about one organization, theoretically one business model, but you don't have one template for every city. It would not work, right? The Chicago situation would not work um, in in uh, in uh, Central Ohio, where you are, Lisa, uh, the Central Ohio um, model wouldn't necessarily work in Omaha and in Nebraska. So you're talking about adapt adaptability. This idea that there's not one answer to every problem. Talk a little bit about that idea of not one answer to every problem, and also talk about where an answer that is developed in another United Way or another community might have been applied. Let's let us let us do this on a free-for-all basis. Does anybody want to jump in? Um, yeah, I, I can, because I think we've got a couple unique examples around that. Um, one of the things that all of our United Ways try to do is lean in not only with uh, corporate partners, but also government officials and really try to understand where you're most uniquely positioned to do work. So I'll start with one that we're unique in, and that's uh, we run the Jobs for America's Graduates Program for the state of Nebraska. It's a program that is embedded in the school systems in middle and high school and helps kids build their core competencies, um, but also expose them to career pathing. It's really a workforce development program. And there was a specific issue that we were we're facing in Nebraska in that um, we are losing more professionals than we're gaining each year. Last year, we lost 4,500 um, bachelor degree professionals um, than we were able to bring back in. And so there's a concerted effort with um, our governor, with our city officials to not only attract and retain talent, but to try to grow talent. And because of that partnership in United Way already having strong connections with the business community, we've been able to grow that program exponentially. In 19, we had, it was in three different schools. We're now in 80, so we went up to 4,000 students being uh, uh, served. And the goal is to hit all 244 school districts across the state um, to really showcase to young people you know, and help them build their skill set. So that's something that's unique to our United Way. Um, and you know, we listened and, and best understood where uh, where the needs would be. On the flip side of that, I think 211 is this really interesting and strong program that many United Ways across the country lead. 
Um, and I mentioned earlier, you know, we serve the entire state of Nebraska and then work with our partners in United Ways in Iowa and Illinois to also um, provide that service um, to the community and kind of that best in class practice, you know, really trying to um, bring in, um, you know, ensuring that we're really delivering needs and, and support people in that way is a, is a really good example of us doing what other United Ways are doing and, you know, trying to, to provide the top quality service that we can um, to make. What are the, what are the specific services that you provided to that program? Yeah. So 211 is a health and human service referral line. So um, it allows us when people are in need to be able to call in and get access to anything that they wouldn't call into for 911 or 988, for example. And last year we had nearly 300,000 contacts through our call center. The beautiful thing is, is that, um, you know, we're well positioned to know where they can get resource. And we were able to serve 90% of the callers to get them to a resource that was beneficial. Um, and then also that data helps inform how we invest. So it's kind of this, you know, mutually beneficial role. We received funding not only from United Ways in Iowa, but our legislature knew that that was a really important resource to have. And they provide funding to help support the Nebraska side of that work. And so when we had recent tornadoes hit, for example, we were called up within 13 minutes of the tornadoes hitting the region to address those specific needs. So Lisa, do you have those kinds of examples as well, where you have unique programs that are really about Central Ohio and as well as adapting uh, programs that Sean might use. Well, that, but yes, we do. And I think that a great example is the Seamer Institute uh, and the Seamers are philanthropists that are actually coincidentally from Columbus mm -hmm. and are very focused in their philanthropy on uh, supporting stabilizing families so that children do not have to leave the school they're in and can complete the full school year in the same school, which research would indicate that's going to, you're going to have the greatest academic gains if you can do that, right? So mobility caused by, for example, evictions um, are, are what the seamers are working to reduce. And they have a over 90% um, uh, effectiveness rate and prevention. So you're partnering with a family who had this idea about this program? Yeah. Yes. And so now they've taken it to scale. We, we happen to have one of the largest in uh, Columbus because the Seamers are located here. It started in Florida and here, but now it's in over 70 uh, communities across the country and it's all through United Way. So they use, the Seamers use United Way as their platform for reaching as many children that as they can in this network. And they allow each community to make it their own. There's not, it's not pre, there, it's not prescriptive, except that what they want is kids not to leave their school. And so we all make it our own throughout the, throughout the country. So what kind of uh, programs, so that's, that's, that's a program that you have basically adopted within Central Ohio. What kind of programs might, might Sean have that you also provide that are United Way or, or that Shauna might have that, that you also provide? You also would, provide, for example, the two one one service. Or do we, you provide we, other services? We do, yeah, we do not. We're not a two one one provider, okay. um, but of course, we work closely with it. But I would say probably uh, some Vita program around helping people access benefits through their tax return is something that I would guess both my colleagues on this program also do. Talk a little bit about that. Well, we're uh, we're delighted to be able. It's one of our most favorite programs to bring uh, what we call tax time to the community and through the help of volunteers, providing free tax services. So helping um, individuals prepare their tax return uh, for free. And anyone in our community who earns sixty five thousand dollars or less uh, qualifies for free tax services. So we literally return millions and millions of dollars back into our community and really help people understand the tax benefits that they might not know they're even qualified for. So we have people walking away with new resources that they didn't know they could tap into. That's wonderful. And John, you know, you're, you're one of the major cities of the world, right? Chicago, the Chicago metro area, the complexity there is, is so huge 
Yet, when you bring it down to the programs that you provide, you're actually looking at people's needs on the same basis. They just happen to be in a larger city, but right? you're, you're actually analyzing these needs in the same way that Shauna just described, the same way Lisa just described. Talk a little bit about some of the unique aspects of what you do in Chicago, but also some of the things that are very similar. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that for me, like when you think about United Way, our work is actually pretty simple. It's about how do you bring people together to try to solve problems? And that's true if you're in a big city like Chicago. It's true if you're in a rural town in North Dakota, right? It's, it's bringing people together. Um, we do it through fundraising. We do it through volunteerism. But then it's understanding and working with people to say, what are the challenges and opportunities we have and how do we go address them, right? And so at the, the most baseline, all of our work is actually the same. Right. It just is the community context takes us in different places. Well, the advantage of being you know, a really large area is we get to also experiment and innovate within the region. And so what I mean by that is I talked earlier about the these 18 kind of place based we call them neighborhood network efforts. And um, we bring think of them as like 18 different operations that say, hey, what's what's going to be this um, the best thing for the Austin neighborhood on the west side of Chicago, and they bring a coalition of partners together and really drive around what's called a quality of life plan and implement it and all those good things. But then what's cool is we bring those 18 partners together and say, all right, what's working on the west side of Chicago? What's working on the south side of Chicago? What are we seeing in the northwest suburbs? And how can you learn from one another? And so even you know, as we're learning from each other as, as United Ways and cities across the country, we're also able to see that here in, in our region where our partners are learning from one another and really able to build off of the successes um, that someone else has. Because, you know, the challenges that we face in Austin neighborhood in Chicago, it's, you know, it's the largest neighborhood on the west side of Chicago. They're very different than the challenges that you face in the far southeast side of Chicago. But there's a lot of lessons that can be learned from how you attack them. And so our partners tend to focus more on how they learn from one another than from the, the vast differences that they have. And that's been a really cool thing to see. And for us, um, one of the, the real wins around implementation is you can get so much faster when people are building off the successes of others. The thing that I really think that is so interesting about the United Way Network is that it does function as a bit of a neural network, both on a regional basis, like you were talking about, Lisa, about the various counties in Chicago and the 50-some United Ways, right? You, you function as a bit of a neural network where you're sharing knowledge, you're sharing experiences. And then on a national uh, basis, when you go beyond a state or beyond a particular region, that also happens. There's a lot of information exchange. I'd like to talk a little bit about the Midwest as a part of the nation that is constantly in the news because of all the election stuff that's going on and so on. There, there is a lot of, of dialogue that we see in the media about divisions, rural versus urban uh, versus suburban, um, the various political parties, the various regions, the various um, uh, beliefs that people have. But it seems to me that that what you're doing is you're dealing with with um, at a much more fundamental level, right? People who have the capability to serve or supply uh, resources, either through volunteer time or through financial resources, and people who are their neighbors who might need those. Talk a little bit about how you deal with the fact that you're dealing at a much more fundamental level than political beliefs or party or or any of the things that divide us or whether you're you're in a rural area you know sean when you said you know your, your united way goes from rural to suburban to to uh to intense urban talk a little bit about how you encourage people to come together just that mechanics of bringing people together talking over what would normally be be boundaries and and solving common problems um, Sean, you want to give it a, give it a shot first, sure. and, and just talk a little bit about your convening and and how you actually get there. Yeah, I mean, so it's some. We're going to copy you, by the way. Uh, you know, anybody says something that is absolutely going to solve this problem of division in the country, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna all copy you. Okay. Yeah. Well, if if we figure that out, we'll we'll be in great shape. But um, I mean, the reality <laughs> that we see is we're we're hyper diverse, right? And diversity in every form and function um, of the word. 
And, and so like, you know, whether it be political, whether it be otherwise, like, you know, you have some of the most progressive uh, people in the country in Chicago, you also have, you know, really conservative air. And so like all of that exists. And, but what we find is that like kids don't care, right? Families don't care. <laughs> At the end of the day, like, you know, a kid is wanting to know, are you going to create a future for me that is going to be a place where I can grow, that I can develop, that I can feel safe. Um, and, and we really try to focus there. Um, we try to stay out of what is the reality of our world today of the hyper-partisan nature, the everyone's just against you or for you. I mean, it's, it's not very functional, um, for us to be able to accomplish our work. And instead we try to center it back on the family and say, you know, look, this family on the West side of Chicago, they just want to know, do you care? And they just want to know, are you going to be with us and with them as we continue to develop this community? And, you know, what we find is you can take people who are on very different perspectives on any issue. And when you bring them into community and say, hey, how do we solve this together? The focus very quickly gets to action and trying to do real work as opposed to the like grandstanding and like, oh, we should. Do it. it doesn't matter because you're talking about the family right in front of you. And that's been for us really a, a, a helpful function. Um, to bring people together around core issues and stay out of the, you know, the stuff that takes up the, 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 the airwaves and news channels these days. Like we really just try to focus on the family and, and then how do we build from there? And then that becomes how do you focus on the neighborhood? And then that becomes how you focus on the city and how do you focus on the region? But it all starts with people. Um, and I think the more we anchor it in people, uh, the, the easier it is for us to, to stay out of the, the turbulence. Donna, Lisa, do, how, how do you see this? Is this just a matter of just focusing on action and not worrying about all this other stuff? I know for us, I think people are just hungry to be together and to solve problems together. And, um, you know, we, we utilize data to help inform decision making, but we're very careful about making sure everybody feels welcome and to be part of the solution. And, you know, in a time that has been really divisive, I think people are excited about that. I love that United is in our our name, for example, because I think we really do um, walk the talk when it comes to that. I also think because you've got, you know, leaders within each community, part of our biggest job as a, a CEO for, for United Way is to pull people together and be really thoughtful about who you add to your board and who you bring in that um, can help affect change. And they... You know, and our, I'm sure our community is just like everyone others. People really do want to care and give for each other, give to each other, make sure that your community is the best it can possibly be. So if you can be a convener and a collaborator and help make that happen, um, you know, it's a it's a really cool part of um, being part of the United Way network. The two things that I heard from from you, Sean, and you, Sean, that I want to test with Lisa uh, is one, the listening piece, listening to everyone. And Shauna, you raised something that was very interesting. Lisa, I'd be very interested in hearing your your view. And and if I got this wrong, Shauna, please uh, correct correct me. Um, representation on the board, so that you have representation in the fullest sense, right? From the business community, from the communities being served. Am I getting this correct? Hundred so percent. So that everybody has a voice, right? And then everybody listening to each other. Lisa, are you doing the same thing? Are you in, in shaping your board and shaping your staff, are you thinking about just giving everybody a voice and, and being able to interact together in a way that is courteous and, and respectful and gets things done? Absolutely. And we're really proud of the work we do. And I'll share uh, what we're proud of. Uh, and then I'll touch on, we're in a pretty divisive state and I, you know, every state has its divisions, but it, do, it does hamper our work, I think. Um, so we are committed, you know, I think many United Ways have DE and I way back in there before it was popular to as a, you know, a, a pillar of, um, you know, of uh, importance in our work. So one example for us is in 2018, we implemented a policy that in order to get funding from United Way, you had to have a diverse board um, that reflected the demographics of Franklin County. So that's the county we serve. Where we saw the greatest discrepancy when we uh, did the research on board diversity was race. So we started with race, the greatest disparity, less disparity in some other areas. This came off a board source survey um, 
that indicated that in the last 20 years, really nothing had changed across nonprofit boards. 82% of all boards and nonprofit boards in our country are still led by white men. So we wanted to make certain that those board members at the board table of United Way funded partners were making informed decisions based on having representation that reflected our community. So that's been a great, um, you know, it's been a great effort for us supporting our nonprofits. One, to increase the pipeline and identifying diversity for boards, but then also how do we make certain that boards are inclusive? They might have people that look like or from backgrounds that represent uh, diversity, but did that mean that they were included at the table? So I think in that respect, we're really proud of the work that we do. And so of course we've hold, held ourselves to be, you know, we wanna be the example of how to do this. And so we have a very diverse board uh, and are proud of that. I will say though, in Ohio, there the diversity is, is, a, is a challenge for us. We have a very conservative state and our cities, uh, our three big cities, Cleveland, Columbus, and Cincinnati are all led by Democrats. It's very hard to get things done in the state house when you're a democratic city. You know, it's 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 so interesting. I, I look at our, our our work, right? We're we're, we're a private business, and the, I have a hiring strategy that is no matter how our staff is configured, the next person that I hire is going to have different expertise, different backgrounds, different perspectives, different genders, different identities than the people that are already there. We're always hiring for the next new idea, way of thinking, way of being, because it makes us stronger, right? That's how we do it. And it doesn't matter, whatever the configuration is, right? There's there's always something that's missing. So we, we always recruit for the missing thing. When you're putting together your teams, your boards and so on and so forth, what is what is your philosophy? Is it, is it similar? Is it different? Are you... Are you looking for people with particular career tracks. Sean, what, what what are you doing when you're when you're bringing in people? So, I think it's two ways. Um, one is just our fundamental design is to be less about us and more about the community and partner. So, like it, what's interesting is that like and I'll answer the part about us because that's really where your question is, but mm -hmm. we fundamentally think that you can't just hire in order like internally in order to make decisions and, and the, the efforts that take place in community, that you actually have to have partnership and then cede that power and responsibility and authority to community to drive that work forward. And so, so you're hiring for community connection as much as anything else. Is that what you're saying? Or so it's more of actually the business model that we use is to really um, to take that control and actually give it to others. So then when we're thinking about hiring, what we have, what we're hiring is how can people build trust? How can people create that? Because for the, our model to work, you have to be able to create that trust in community in which community feels empowered and supported. And so a lot of what we do when we're, we're making those decisions is make sure that, you know, one, of course, we're reflective of the community, but two, we're also people who are able to engender that kind of trust to drive this work forward because ultimately it's the community driving this for us. It's not United Way. And that's our, you know, our secret sauce, if you will, is this ability to get community to drive work forward. And so hiring decisions by us have to be things that bring that to the forefront and not make it about us as the organization. So Shauna in Nebraska, right? You've got, you've got Omaha, you've got all these different uh, ge geographically dispersed areas that you serve. How do you make sure that that, that kind of connection it, because you have you have limits, right? You can't have an infinite number of staff. How do you how do you ensure that? You know, from a from a board perspective, first off, we not only look at making sure we have um, differences in thought and where people come from, but also looking at who's what influence rings are. Because if you can bring in your most influential people in your community, and they buy in and love what you're doing, they become the best ambassadors you can possibly have, and share what they feel you know, why are they sharing their time with us? I'm, a, I'm constantly amazed by, um, you know, what I would consider some of the busiest and most impactful people that they're willing to spend their time with us and lean in in a really intentional way um, to help us be better. And we just never take that for granted. 
So fortunately, it's meant that, you know, our board's kind of a coveted thing to get on. And, um, and, and I love that, right? Because you've got people that are uh, holding themselves and their, their colleagues accountable to making sure that, that what we're trying to accomplish as an organization is done. And then from, um, you know, the hiring perspective, I think just like Sean mentioned, and I'm sure Lisa is doing as well, is that, you know, you really want to be reflective of the community and, and service. So when we think about who we hire for our uh, our JAG professionals, for example, they're teaching in the classroom, but we got um, accommodations through the Department of Education to allow us to get certifications. So because part of the, the work is a, a case management role. So we have folks that came out of social services or um, worked at even as police officers and want this next chapter of their career to be working with young people. And so we, we've really been thoughtful about how we do the hiring there and um, to ensure that those kids feel like they're, they've got trust in the classroom and they've got somebody that's there for them. Um, so some of it, obviously, you're looking at statistics, right? Do we have the right balance of things? But it's more for us about hiring for character and who, you know, who that human is and how they can help propel what we're trying to accomplish forward. Fabulous. Um, Lisa, let's let's wrap this up because we're coming to the to the end of our time. Um, the thing that I think was, that is so interesting just listening to you all is this balance between local uh, very local um, uh, responses and building local constituencies and serving local people and this sort of trading that you do of ideas. Um, as 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 you think about how United Way ought to evolve into the future, and you've all mentioned, for example, government and nonprofit partnerships and partnerships with individuals. You've all mentioned partnerships with business. You've you've talked about serving your different constituents. How do you think that the United Way ought to grow and evolve in this time of division but common problems? Because we don't come together to solve something. We're all we're going to do is be is sniping at each other. That is not going to make the the country uh, stronger. How do you actually get beyond? these various things that you cited, Lisa, as impediments for common action. Is is there some program we can do? Is there something beyond doing these webcasts and trying to reach out across different divisions um, that we can be doing? Or is this really what we have to do is persistent, persistent communication? And you started with me for this question to be answered. <laughs> That's a hard one. Well, the three of us, coincidentally, all serve on a national advisory council to United Way Worldwide. So we do grapple with this together. Um, you know, I'll speak for our United Way. We're staying the course, but it, I don't have an answer for you. It's, um, you know, it's it, what I do love about this brand is learning from people from all over the country. And then we're an international brand. Um, organization as well. So we'll be on committees with people leading United Ways in other countries, which is amazing. So we can all learn from each other, but it's such a unique time in the history of our country. I just thank goodness for United Way that we we try to stay as neutral as possible. So it's a safe place for all. John, do you have any any words of wisdom for us to to bring people together in in service to uh, to others? I mean, I do think it's it gets back to really the the core tenets of of who we are, which is to be a place that understands and listens to the, the neighbors and people in our community and works with them to bring people together. And even in a time when things are super divisive the reality is most people are not divisive to each other. They're divisive in these like abstract ways that are about, you know, social media, about, you know, online, all these kinds of things. But like, you know, we, we just had a, a, my, you know, across the street from my house yesterday, we had hundreds of people walking down to celebrate the Halloween neighborhood Halloween festival. Right. And no one is there saying like, who are you going to vote for? And they're, they're just here with their kids and their families, right? And and I think like part of our job in this work is to be able to create the spaces where the conversations can be had about the important issues in ways that are about how it impacts people and not ways that are talking points and sound bites that are, you know, 
put together by consultants. And they're, you know, respect to all those people who are doing their job and they know what they're trying to get done. But what our job is to do, and I think we're pretty good at it, is to bring people together to actually try to solve problems. And, and you know, when we keep the focus there, you know, the better angels of people actually tend to come out. And it's really pretty cool to see that, you know, we're making progress on the west side of Chicago right now. We've been able to catalyze hundreds of millions of dollars of investment for the first time in a generation. There are cranes in a neighborhood that have never had cranes. Like, these things are happening. You're not going to read about that because it doesn't make a cool soundbite. But I promise you that the, the kids and families who live in the Austin neighborhood on the west side of Chicago right now are saying, something's different here. And I'm excited about it. And I believe I have a different future. And I think that's the only way that, that I've seen that you can get people to get out of the stuff and instead focus on the things that matter, which are you know the kids and families that we're talking about. Donna, you want to give us your, your, your last word? You know, I think sometimes you think about United Way as being around for a really long time and they must do things the, the same way we've always done them. What I'm most excited about for our future is I think we have a really strong entrepreneurial spirit and we are leveraging the resources and the talent and you know the people that are working with us to think differently about how we can solve problems and to not put ourselves within um, really strong confines of only raising money and giving it out. I think um, you know we're really well positioned to be a problem solver, and you know our approach and how we work together and think innovatively about what we can do to to change trajectory for the communities that we serve. And the fact you've got people in all of the communities embedded in the community that know their community best, there's no other um, not for profit that that's set up like that. So sometimes it gets discouraging, and especially you know you mentioned. Uh, the political things that are going on. And if, if you listen too much to it, it, it can really um, kind of jade your perspective. We're seeing beauty in our community and we're seeing that a lot of good things are happening and we're trying to celebrate that. So my personal answer into how I can learn to make the country better is to learn from the United Ways of the Midwest. Really, you have uh, helped me to understand how you remain local yet learn from each other, how you think about individuals yet bring people together from across various divisions to to uh, come and help neighbors. Um, you've talked about a government and nonprofit and donor partnerships and business partnerships and community uh, partnerships and connections. If I learn the lessons that you apply every day, I will be a better person. I'd like to thank you all. Lisa Cordes, President and CEO of United Way of Central Ohio. Shauna Forsberg, uh, President and CEO of United Way of the Midlands. And Sean Garrett, President and CEO of United Way of Metro Chicago, you are my heroes. Please thank your donors. Please thank your staffs. Please thank your board members. And please thank your community members, those who give and those who are receive, who in that interaction are building a stronger country. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.